People often ask me, how do you make your images pop? Of course, there is no single answer for this, but I know that sharpness plays a big role in that. A photograph sharpened the right way always pops out. Hi, my name is Miklos Mayer and I'm a photo tour guide in Budapest, Hungary. And in this video, I will show you my method for advanced sharpening in Lightroom. You may know that RAW files are inherently soft because the camera applies no sharpening at all. Everything has to be done in post-process. So here's how this picture looks like at 100% magnification without sharpening and with sharpening. You can tell it makes a big difference. So in this video I will show you my sharpening process in Adobe Lightroom. It doesn't matter if you use Lightroom CC or Lightroom Classic, the sharpening sliders are the same. I have a long exposure shot from Budapest showing the Chambridge and the Parliament. And I have already adjusted the levels and the white balance, so I will just show the sharpening part now. I switch to develop module and this is the sharpening tab in Lightroom. When I set the sharpness, I always look at the picture in one-to-one -one view. That means 100% magnification. This way each pixel on the picture corresponds to one pixel on the screen. So I click on one-to-one -one here. What most people do is that they just apply a basic Lightroom sharpening preset, like here is sharpening medium. And if they want to get a sharper picture, they just increase the amount slider. So they crank it up and obviously the picture will be sharper. And I used to do this too, but this is wrong. The reason why it's wrong is because a lot of artificial noise is introduced into the homogeneous areas. Look at the water here. There are lots of noise here and there also in the sky, lots of noise is being introduced because of, of the sharpening. I go back here. It's best to set the sharpness on areas that have lots of detail. So luckily there's a masking slider in Lightroom. Press and hold the Alt key while adjusting the slider and you will see, see what the masking slider does. I increase it now. So where it's black, it means that the sharpening, sharpening will not be applied. Where it's white, it means that the sharpening will be applied. You see, if I start crank it up, less and less parts of the picture will be sharpened. If I decrease it, more parts will be sharpened. I think around 50 is a good balance, so I will leave it on 50 now. You can see that now much of the noise have disappeared from the water. Meanwhile, the sharpness remained the same on the important details. So when you use the masking slider, the goal is to mask out those areas that are homogeneous, like the sky or the water. So what about the radius and detail sliders? For radius, I usually set around one pixel and the detail slider it acts kind of similar to the amount slider if you press and hold alt then you can see what the detail does increases a fine detail versus coarse detail so my recommendation is that sharpening should not be overdone so I will decrease the amount slider you see, if I press Alt again and decrease it, I will see its effect. The screen will go into black and white. I think around 50 or 60 is a good balance. Also for detail, 50 is a, is a good balance. So after all, sharpness is just a mathematical tweaking with the pixels. And as such, it introduces artifacts into the picture. If you'd like to know what exactly these sliders mean, I highly recommend you check out Cambridge in Colors article on sharpness. I will put the link below the video. These sharpening settings vary from camera to camera, from lens to lens. 
Um, for example, on my Canon 6D, which is a full frame 20 megapixel camera, for landscapes, I like these settings. Here it is. I like 50 amount, radius 1 pixel, detail 80, and masking at 50. You can see that applying these settings, the details are sharp, but there is less noise in the homogeneous areas. I think it's easiest if you save your favorite sharpening settings into presets, just like I did here. So I have already sharpened the picture, but we are not done yet because the picture has to be exported and this is a crucial step in sharpening. I press Ctrl Shift E and it brings up the export panel. And this is a crucial step for sharpening because if you resize the picture when you export then you have to apply output sharpening. So this is a resized picture without output sharpening and this is a resized picture with output sharpening applied. You can see there's a slight difference there. So for example, if you are sharing on social media, it's best to downsize the picture to like 1800 pixel wide on the long edge and apply output sharpening and sharpen for screen and set the amount to high and then export. And this way you will have an image that really pops out with as little noise as possible. So that was it for today. Uh, enjoy shooting and see you in the next video.